The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening uh, on a Thursday night. I am Terry Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us here on the ABS Evening News. And I'm Joel Rain. Good evening. A man died during a freak accident at a construction site in the southern section of the island this morning. Well, police say he went to deliver concrete at one of the three construction sites at the location, but was told it was the wrong grade. He was reportedly in the process of leaving the location when the concrete still in the truck when he lost control while going down a slope. 63-year-old Vic Victor Medina died after he lost control of the concrete truck. He was driving on a private property. Police say he went to deliver concrete at one of the three construction sites at the location, but was told it was the wrong grade. Well, of course, uh, he, he was, uh, the truck slammed into an excavator and a pickup at one of the other building sites on the same property. Medina was pulled from the truck and rushed to hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Another individual reportedly sustained a broken leg. The concrete truck is owned by Roberts Construction Limited. Managing Director Edward Roberts tells ABS News he met with Medina's family and expressed condolences in the wake of the tragic accident. He says the company will make every effort to assist the family. Well, Mr. Roberts also says he cannot comment extensively about the circumstances and will await the outcome of the continuing police probe. Of course, we will update you as we have as more information on that incident become available. Now, the mother of a teenage victim of bullying says she will be pressing charges against the perpetrators. Her son was recently targeted in an incident captured on video and has since gone viral on social media platforms. Meanwhile, the Family and Social Services Division has condemned the actions of the perpetrators. The video posted on Facebook shows a teenage boy whose face we have blurred because of the nature of the incident being ridiculed by other males. The video, which is less than 30 seconds in duration, shows the victim was asked to recite what could be regarded as an offensive phrase. And when he refused, he was hit with an unidentified object. The teenager was visibly shaken by the assault and began to cry. The individuals present could be heard laughing and insisting he repeat the offensive phrase. Now, Fiona Charles Richards, upon seeing the video, tells ABS bullying entails the insidious practice of preying on the weak. I find that very often that there are persons who may project their own hurts on others, um, who they are less able to fight back and so as a result of that those are things that will happen so what I would want to ask is where are the adults around during that time and so that is some concerns for me because if there are adults around why didn't no one step in she says uh, when incidents like this occur there are questions uh, to be asked about the perpetrators all of our children are going through so many things already. Some are being physically abused, and so they go out and abuse others. They project their hurt onto others. A lot of our children are going through several things, and so you don't know what will be the last straw. You don't know where some. The director also explains adults need to be mindful that their actions could influence this type of antisocial behavior. It could also be that children are just doing what they, they see in, in, in adults' behavior as well. So we have to also ask our questions, what are the examples that we are setting for our children? Whereas back then, you know, you make a joke or a hard joke and it was culturally accepted as part of a norm. But the way in which or generation is functioning in terms of bullying each other it is not it is an attack on the person's whole person because they are presumed as being lesser than or weaker than meanwhile his mother tells our news center she has been in contact with the police who have commenced their probe into the incident she says she will take her son to seek medical attention ahead of the police taking further action in the matter the spate of acquisition crimes is of major concern to the Royal Police Force of Antigua and Barbuda. 
This is according to the Commissioner of Police, Atlee Rodney, who says while strategies are being implemented by the police to respond, residents must get involved in helping to solve these crimes. Business owners, schools, churches, and other institutions have been affected by breakings in recent months. It's a cause for concern for law enforcement. Police Commissioner Atlee Rodney says breakings have been among the highest statistically on a yearly basis. But recently, the prevalence of the crime means more has to be done to curb these criminal elements. We have maximized our effort in terms of the patrols, and even in some cases, we have created some statutory um, stationary um, posts at some of those institutions to assist in curbing that problem. Um, nowadays, we, we have to use this, the resources that are at our disposal, and that include the human resource, yes, but also the technology that is available to us. And old-time traditional policing does not fade away, you know, so we have to continue to work with our community and continue to work with our stakeholders. Rodney makes clear the statistics have been alarming in regards to acquisition crimes so far this year. The majority of our offenses have to do with stealing. You know, you look at um, the house breaking, the break-ins, the larceny, you know, even a number of malicious damage to vehicles is as a result of some persons trying to steal items from the vehicles. You had this year a few robberies, and, and what you see, all of them have to do with acquisition of other person's property. And I think that is one of the, the concerns we have. And we have to make a 180. We have to turn around and break that trend where we don't have respect for other person's property. I, I, I think we should start to demonstrate ourselves as a community that we can be mature enough to respect the worth of other persons. Community policing has always been an area advocated by the top cop. Rodney says this is one way the communities can help the police in bringing perpetrators to justice. We try to ask persons to know their community, know your neighborhood, know the persons around you. So if you have that knowledge, you are in a position to detect you know, suspicious movement or suspicious persons in that neighborhood. Um, we uh, have to go back to the days where we know our neighbors, know where they work, know what type of work they do, mm -hmm. and maybe even know some of their relatives and friends who normally visit. Yes, we have this phrase we say now, well, we don't know who our neighbors are, but we have to get rid of that and know who our neighbors are and continue to work with each other. The police, as much as we would want to be proactive, but we cannot be at everywhere at the same time. And we need the community input in terms of what is happening so we can assist to keep the neighborhood safe. Rodney says the affected entities and the country as a whole have a role to play in putting a stop to these acquisition crimes. Terry Andrew, ABS News. Meanwhile, Commissioner of Police, uh, Adley Rodney, is imploring individuals to seize the opportunity during the gun amnesty to rid the streets of illegal weapons. The gun amnesty here in Antigua and Barbuda began some two weeks ago and runs through December 2022. The police chief has this word of advice for individuals. It helps when you remove that firearm from the community, especially those illegal firearms that are causing havoc. We also want to appeal to persons in the community who know of those persons who have the firearm. The time has come that you cannot shield people like that because you don't know whose life mm -hmm. that firearm is going to take. You know, we have seen too many persons have lost their life because of illegal firearms. And it's not only Antigua, we are seeing it across the region, across the world. But I think in our little neck of the wood, we can make a difference. Well, Rodney says people who refuse to disclose information are causing more harm than good. This notion of you know, hiding the information from law enforcement does not help the individual because you are allowing that individual to go down a path of criminal activity. You are not helping your own self because the next bullet from that gun might be in your body. So Lester Bird Medical Center is working to increase the number of doctors in its emergency room. It is one of the measures being considered to reduce waiting times at the year. Information Minister the Honorable Melford Nicholas says the government remains committed to finding lasting solutions to the issue. So there has been no shortage in commitment from the government for health care. Yet, there is still um, this final bit in terms of how 
the service points meet the average person who go to these medical facilities. And there's certainly going to have to be an adjustment in attitudes on all sides. And um, we are going to have to frame our minds around it as to how we can ensure that we can get um, better services or the availability of, of the consumers, of people who, the everyday people. Cabinet notes say research shows some 40,000 people visit the ER each year with many needing urgent care rather than emergency care. In light of this, the government is also seeking to increase the number of doctors at the clinics which are designed to provide urgent care. Now, Fort Farmers at the Otto's Comprehensive School got their eyes examined by Lions Club screening event earlier today. Jamie Roche reports. Students having their vision screened at Otto's Comprehensive School on World Sight Day Thursday. It's part of the Lions Club's ongoing IK initiatives. We have done our eye screening, our vision screening within our primary schools over the past years. There are times when we would have gone into secondary schools to do the vision screening. Usually on World Sight Day, we would go into a secondary school and do the vision screening with our corporate sponsors. This year, we're very happy to have on board with us iMobile and Paradise Vision Center. Principal Foster Roberts calls it a worthwhile initiative. Especially in a situation where we know that um, there's some of them who may have some sort of eye, eye issue, but unfortunately parents are not able to provide the necessary finances to, to get the assistance. And so the Lions will have stepped forward and uh, we are pleased for the initiative. Optometrist Jamila Fabian says they've recommended further evaluation for some of the students. So far we've screened quite a few children already and we found quite a few that do need further testing so some of them they don't have 2020 and due to the setting that we have here we want to do further testing because this is just to see whether or not they need to do further testing and then in the office setting then we'll be able to do more and see if they do need glasses. The Lions Club first vice president says they will contact the parents of students who need further care and the club will cover the cost with support from sponsor Caribbean Lottery. This project is very dear to the lottery's heart and we believe that kids are the future and we believe that as long as we can equip them for the future, our society will get much better. Jamie J. Roche, ABS News. Meanwhile, optometrist Jamila Fabian says staring at the screen of any electronic device can contribute to vision problems. We are in a digital age where a lot of a lot of children are on tablets and screens, so they're using a lot of their near vision more than their distance vision. So now that they're back at school, you're finding that a lot of them are now noticing that they can't see the board like they should be. They're sitting in the back of the class and they can't see the board because things are so focused on up close when you come to distance now they're not seeing as well as they should be. The optometrist recommends that people take regular breaks away from the screen when using these devices. We have a 2020 rule. Every 20 minutes, you look off at 20 feet for 20 seconds. And that will help keep the eyes relaxed when you're focusing for long periods of time. Staying on the subject of sight, to the Court's Right of View Initiative 2022 has come to a conclusion in Antigua with a presentation of spectacles of 25 to 25 students in need. Among the recipients are students from both primary and secondary schools, including Clare Hall Secondary and St. Anthony's Secondary Schools. This year's initiative saw 100 students being supplied with classes across the OECS. The initiative, which began in 2018, has become a yearly exercise. People nominated students who might be in need of eye care and are unable to access attention due to their financial circumstances. Courts representatives are delighted to give back, noting free eye exams are available year round. All right, uh, that's our first segment on the ABS Evening News on this Thursday. We have more national developments we're following. At Nagico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things, 
and the small things that mean everything. Good day, Terminex. How may I help? Hello, is this Terminex? Look, there are literally a million roaches in my house. You coming now? Yes, we can. He'll be there shortly. Okay, thanks. for coming so quickly. I really appreciate it. Find it. Try it. Paint it. Love it. Find it. Try it. Paint it. Love it. Find it. Try it. Paint it. Love it. Find it, try it, paint it, love it. Find it, try it, paint it, love it, love it, L -l 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 love it, love it. Find it. Visit Sherwin Williams Antigua on Utility Drive, Casana Gardens, or call 562 9450 for your next paint project today. My name is Yanni Hughes and I am the commercial officer at Andrew Insurances. I have been in this position for four years. My day-to-day -day functions as a commercial officer is to establish and amend, maintain the insurance policies of our corporate clients, as well as to build and maintain relationships with our companies and corporate customers. What I love most about my clients is that they are very loyal. They have been with our company for years and they continue to stay with us and support us as we go. The insurance industry is a very dynamic industry, it's always changing and we are able to offer our customers new and improved products. We do have the best cover on island, which means that our clients can feel a sense of comfort and security in the event an accident or a mishap might occur and that's something that we're very proud of. Welcome to Rovier Surgical Suites, a state-of-the-art surgical center with a personal touch. Rovier Surgical Suites is a boutique medical facility which provides quality health care in a pleasant and comfortable atmosphere. Upon referral, we guide you through the preparation for your surgery, ensuring that you get the best possible care and a smooth and restful recovery. Our team of qualified and experienced physicians and nurses also includes an ENT surgeon with more than 30 years of experience. We specialize in advanced gynecological surgery. Our associates include specialists in orthopedics and general surgery. Rovier Surgical Suites, innovation meets compassion. We're dedicated to your health and well-being. Antigua and Barbuda joins the rest of the world today in celebrating International Day to promote a global culture of disaster risk reduction. The day has been designated by the United Nations General Assembly themed Early Warning for All, which brings attention to the importance of early warnings in ensuring early action. Acting Director of the National Office of Disaster Services, Shara James, says this country has been working feverishly to build its early warning systems. It allows us to now actually do things such as radio interrupts. And one of the things that we've been doing with this initiative, um, several of the pilot media houses in the country, we've had the consultant actually install radio interrupts into them. So now that we're able to now interrupt broadcasts to bring you emergency messages and necessary actions to take. 
Um, we've also been working with a number of agencies that have key roles in terms of protection and monitoring. So you notice that the Met offices uses their CAP system now to bring out information, and not just about storms, but things such as um, excessive heat mm. and, mm -hmm. and, and dust and air quality and these things that affect our lives. So there are multiple hazards that we're now addressing. The early warning signs are only, the, uh, only one component well, it's only one component, and James says there is also a need to ensure residents know what's required of them when they receive the message. We've been working with a number of other partners, so you see there are different aspects that, that communities are doing, that agencies are doing. When we do cleanups in waterways, and we're talking about illegal dumping and how this can affect flooding in certain areas, and people saying that we're seeing flooding in areas that we never traditionally had before, and you're looking at um, protecting the waterways and water catchments. You're looking at the drainage, how it needs to be redesigned. You're looking at personal actions that we do every day that actually impact our safety. Meanwhile, Acting Director of National Disaster, the Office of Natural Disaster Services, Sherrod James, is asking the public to increase their educational awareness as it relates to tornadoes. Tornadoes, because of their sudden nature, you probably have to respond based on your education and awareness. A member from our newsroom hit the streets to find out how people feel about tornadoes and our tornado preparedness. What do we do if we get rid of a tornado? Okay, I will probably like go to the back and place will look probably more secure to me. Uh, I'll probably build and I feel like more secure to me. They're more stronger and can take an impact of a hurricane because the tornado just like an impact of a hurricane. When you're in town, you see a uh, tornado pass. Well, you just have to, what, what could you do? Huh? If you come in town and you don't, you don't leave it at home, right? You come in town and tornado meet you in town. Well, you just have to just get a little corner, arrest yourself, or you get to PP and go work. Where, where could you run and go? I haven't really given any thought to tornadoes per se. I've seen the damage and the destruction that it will do from the states. But in terms of us here, I am not sure if we are just from building codes and how we go about doing things from day to day. I think we would need a lot more education on it pertaining to tornadoes being in the Caribbean and then seeing from there how we can become tornado ready. But presently, I personally don't think that we are. Tornadoes are rare in Antigua and Barbuda, but they do happen. And it is important that we pay attention to the ways in which we can protect ourselves. James urges residents not to run towards the beauty of tornadoes by calling to memory the last time Antigua was impacted by the natural disaster. The last time we had one coming on land was, I think, in 2013, when it came on land by the Defense Force. Um, it was on land for uh, just over 30 seconds, I believe, but it was able to do over $5 million worth of damage. James shares a few tips to keep in mind if and when a tornado makes landfall. If you're indoors, you stay indoors. Because of their, their, their movement is very random. Um, you don't know where they're going to go, so you, you, you actually watch their development. If you see them in a the distance, um, you keep away. The acting director also gave instructions for those who might find themselves indoors in the unfortunate event of a tornado. All right, uh, we take another commercial break here on the ABS Evening News on this Thursday night. Uh, when we come back, we have news from overseas. And in Venezuela, the search for survivors continues in the wake of heavy rains. And later, mixed reactions as a school shooter in Florida is spared the death penalty. These stories are all ahead for us right here on the ABS Evening News. We'll be right back. <laughs> 